Although Texas industries aren't faced with quite the same types of problems with air and water pollution as some of the other cities in this National Association of Manufacturers telecast conference, we very well may face them, and we've got to meet those federal laws. This is a step in the right direction. Malcolm Landis for Channel 8 News on the move. Social Security and Medicare in the United States protect over 20 million Americans in their 60s and older. And yet many of these people still live in what would be considered poverty. Well, that's what this conference is all about. It's the Texas White House Conference on Aging. It will culminate in the National White House Conference in Washington, D.C. in November of this year. There have been a number of regional conferences around this state and others in the nation leading up to this national conference. The aging in America are in themselves a minority. And we went to the executive director of the Governor's Committee on Aging, Mrs. Carter Crompton. We asked her if the minority groups are participating in this conference and, in fact, attending. As proof of Mrs. Crompton's word, today's conference was translated into Spanish. There were receiving stations in the auditorium. There was an interpreter to interpret the remarks into the native language of many of the state's Mexican-Americans. Mrs. Crompton said that since senior citizens are a minority, they will, in fact, have to compete with other minority groups for both federal and state funds. This is Jim Mitchell, Channel 8 News on the move. I did leave a great organization, I think probably the best, uh, the best franchise in professional basketball, an organization where I was almost assured every year of getting 15 to 20,000 extra in the playoffs. Uh, it, it was tough from that, stand, from that standpoint, because you're always with Lou Alcindor, you're always going to be, uh, be assured of being a winner for the next, probably the next 10 years, however long Lou wants to play. But I'm also very happy to, to have the chance to, to, come into a, to come into an organization that, that I think has committed itself now to, to going for excellence, to trying to become a winner. I was very impressed with the, with the enthusiasm the first time that, uh, that I visited here. I guess it's been about 10 days or two weeks ago now. With the enthusiasm that, uh, that everybody I had a chance to talk with Mr. Folsom, Mr. Embry, Mr. Pollock, as well as Bob Briner. And I was very uh, enthused and impressed with, with the ideas that, that they have toward making Dallas a winner in professional basketball. We're just, the ABA isn't, isn't a funny league anymore. This is what people in the NBA have called it for several years. I can remember a couple years ago when I was coaching over at Tulane, I used to see the ABA teams come in and uh, it, it really was a funny league. I mean, they had the cast-offs, the, the guys that couldn't play were too old, or the screwballs, this type of thing. And, and this, this, is, this has changed. I think probably in the last year has changed more than anything else. I mean, now you have very sophisticated franchises. The, the owners are, are very, very sharp. I, I would say probably in the ABA and NBA together, you only have maybe two or three franchises where the owners aren't 
with it, so to speak. And, and I know that, uh, that Dallas is going to become more and more one of the more sophisticated and one of the leading operations. I, I, I'm, I'm confident of this. Manufacturers in the United States have less than three years to comply with air standard laws, less than three months to comply with some of the water pollution standards that have now been set by the government. Needless to say, there's quite a bit of confusion as to exactly what industry's responsibilities are in this. The National Association of Manufacturers has picked 27 cities for a closed-circuit telecast giving local panels in each of those 27 cities the opportunity to talk to the men who make the laws in Washington from Senator Ed Muskie to other persons who have put together these laws on pollution for our country. The telecast is about to start. All I needed was a loaf of bread. My wife called me and said, pick up some on the way home. So I stopped by the neighborhood grocery, which happened to be a 7-Eleven store here on the east side of Fort Worth. And look what I got myself into. Right on the front part of the 7-Eleven store, a wedding. The bride is Dana Stevenson. She's the assistant manager of this particular 7-Eleven store. The groom is Jeff Pollard. He's the manager. The first they met here almost a year ago. Performed the first operation. And decided to get married. And from Adam's side, what better place the real than, made woman. than their own so private know seven of these store. physical appearances. The minister is the Reverend James Hudgens of the Carter Park Church of Christ. By the same witness these two as they are being united as husband and wife. We pray thy richest blessings upon them as they. Uh, go out into the world together. We realize, Father, that there will be many changes that will have to be made, a lot of adjustments that will have to be made. But we pray thy richest blessings upon them that the world that they sustain one to another will be just that, that will keep them together. And help the most of all, Father, to realize that this is a lifetime contract that only that should sever this marriage relationship. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me kiss the bride. 
The traditional kiss, and now it's Mr. and Mrs. Jeff Pollard, manager and assistant manager of something a little bit more than a 7-Eleven store. Two people who have reason to believe. Oh, thank heaven for 7-Eleven. Dallas Cares is primarily an organization that is nonpartisan, nonprofit, that we have established to see what we can do about obtaining the release and the accounting of all of the prisoners of war and MIAs or men missing in action in Southeast Asia. All past efforts to accomplish this have, for all intents and purposes, failed. Where do you think you'll be successful? Uh, I wish I knew. Uh, with this type of operation, uh, until the people are home, until we've had accountability, uh, we are a failure. It is not true reform, and a level of $2,400 for a family of four that is suggested by Mr. Wilbur Mills is unrealistic, and the denial of rights, basic rights, won since welfare recipients have become organized, are try being trying to take these rights away from them. What is realistic at $2,400 a year? Uh, is not realistic. Realistic is what the, the Labor Department study showed in 1968. There was a study that showed that a family of four, depending upon where they lived in this country, needed from $6,500 to $10,000 a year just to live adequately.
under this general revenue sharing proposal embodied in Senate Bill 680, which is co-sponsored by Senator John Power, Texas would receive $243,034,154 the first year. Approximately 50% of this amount, fixed by law, would be passed through to the counties and cities of Texas. The time has come to begin the process of turning power and resources back from Washington to the people in the states and the localities from which that power originally came. Our system of government is the best on the globe because it leaves local decisions to local authorities. It is the people in the individual communities who require basic services. They foot the bill and in return expect certain standards of service from those they pay to serve them. But the power and the authority or self-reliance of local government has eroded to a dangerous point. As the central federal government has grown in power and authority, the state and local governments have diminished. 